Hello, everyone. Um, it's three minutes past. I don't know if we're expecting anyone else to join. Uh, Herman, you said you were calling up Mwenwa, is that right? And if so, I see that um, he's connected. That's right. Uh, when, what can you confirm you can uh, hear us well? I, I am connected. Mwenwa, keep over here. Lovely. Then I suggest Thank you, we, we might as well start the call. Since uh, Izumi is not able to make it, I agreed to chair the call today. Um, would it be possible to get the agenda up on the um, screen? Working working on it, Zulani. Yeah, one minute. A lot. Um, and I might as well take the opportunity to ask if anyone else had anything else to add to the agenda. Okay, I can't hear anything. So we might as well proceed. Um, were they, uh, Herman, would you be able to help me? Were there any remaining action items from the last meeting? No, it's just about publishing the notes of uh, the last meeting. Um, um, Isumi asked to take a look on one of those. Uh, so I'll send a reminder to me, to Isumi to, um, to uh, check the pending notes that is in their inbox right now. Okay, lovely. Thanks. Well, uh, in that case, we'll um, start with a general status update and start with the, um, um, well, follow up from ICANN 53. Uh, and feel free, any of uh, the, the rest of you who were at the uh, ICANN 53 meeting, to add anything uh, you may have. In fact, I think uh, on this call it might be – no, apologies. I should actually note the participants first. Apologies. Uh, I can see that Andre and Paul are here from the right region. And I can see Michael here from Arin and Wenwa from the Afrinic region. And I think there are no other Chris participants. Um, we welcome Alan as an observer, of course. Okay, lovely. We have an agenda on there. So we might sort of start then with the first 3A follow-up from ICANN 53. And we thought it might be useful to just give a very brief update on what happened at the ICANN 53 meeting uh, for those who were not at that meeting. Uh, I will start giving an update and I'll give everyone else an opportunity to, to add to that. Um, in very briefly, um, I thought we had a, a very productive meeting. Um, we, um, the main focus um, was not unexpectedly on, on the CWG and that proposal and then also on the IPR. So um, before the ICANN meet, meeting, the CWG they, uh, group submitted their proposal, their final proposal, um, and that then went through the chartering organisations for approval. Uh, from what I understand, it hasn't been submitted to the ICD yet, so anyone, maybe if anyone else uh, can clarify that, but I, from what I understand, it has not been uh, submitted yet. Um, and um, the thing that was, uh, the one item that was most discussed um, was, uh, from our perspective, the IPR issue. And what happened there was um, that there was a text in the um, CWG proposal that was apparently inserted very last minute and that had not reached consensus um, on the IPR issue that stated that um, the PTI should be the holder holder of the trademark. Um, this then generated uh, and some discussions in the ICG and they sent a formal communication to the CWG and asked them first of all uh, that they first of all noted that there was no consensus on this point um, in the CWG and then asked the um, CWG to uh, work to um, resolve this issue and to um, uh, to, re to re 
I think the wording was to reconcile with the existing proposals on the table. Um, during that meeting, the CWG, we had informal communications with the CWG chairs. And in those informal communications, um, they were very clear to us that, in fact, that text in there was bracketed text. It was an, in an appendix uh, that was um, uh, not an agreed text, and it was, didn't, was a text that had not been discussed and did not have consensus. And in the CWG engagement session, they were very clear about that the CWG does not actually have a position um, on the matter. And this is also what they've then written to in response to the ICG. And I thought I might actually um, paste in the link of the CWG stewardship response to the ICG uh, in the chat room and then also post um, the ICANN board's comments to the ICG. And I might actually stop there and see if anyone else has anything to add to that. Okay, I can't see any and so um, I'll continue with my update. Um, so um, the other thing, there, there were obviously quite a few discussions uh, um, at the uh, ICANN 53 meeting, and there were also meetings of the uh, ICG where they were looking at their timelines. Um, and I'll get back to some of the things they have been discussion, discussing about the uh, communications and messaging in, under agenda point number five. Um, one thing that um, was very clear, though, uh, I think, from some of the, from, um, the messages from the um, NTIA was, was really the implementation of um, uh, of the proposal and how long this would take. And there is uh, an updated timeline um, produced by the ICG to this effect. Um, as you all know, uh, the NTIA reached out to the ICG and asked all operational communities to get back to, um, to the NTIA with what they would think were uh, realistic um, uh, timelines, then ICG has now responded to this and have up updated their timelines. Let me see if I can paste that into the window as well. And I'll stop again and, and give anyone else the opportunity to provide uh, additional input here. Okay, uh, I can't hear anyone, can't see any hands, and I can't hear everyone, anyone, so I'll proceed. And I'll just paste the Dropbox um, timeline that the ITG has, which um, looks at um, the time from uh, when they, re well, actually from now and, and forward. So it looks like the ITG will be, uh, is currently uh, assessing the CWG proposal. Um, and it will then work to combine all the three proposals uh, during July. And there will be a public comment period on the interim final proposal in all of August going into September. And an analysis of that um, till the end of September. And then the preparation of the final proposal will happen in the, in the middle of all, uh, October. So around uh, the time for the next ICANN meeting. Okay, so um, if anyone has, if no one has anything to add to 3B, I will swiftly move on to 3C, Chris comment on review committee. Um, well, as you've seen, it's, uh, we had a, a, 
a very brief round of comments within the CRISP team uh, on the review committee, and Izumi has uh, submitted our comments on the review committee to um, on the global IANA transfer list. I don't think there are any open issues there, and we seem to uh, there didn't seem to be anything controversial about the charter, and and we seem to be in general agreement. Uh, did anyone want to raise anything uh, in relation to this? Andre, please go ahead. Thank you, Norani. Um, well, I, I don't think I want to raise anything. Uh, I think our response was very clear, and um, I, I agree fully that the Charter, as it is, uh, doesn't represent any conflict. There was one comment on the IANA transfer list from Andrew Dull. I think he has a point. Um, um, but it's not for the Chris team, so I'm just just relaying this comment that uh, it seems, well, from his perspective, he wasn't uh, thinking of the review committee as standing committee. But the point is that the scope of the review committee should be very tight um, in order to, not to create a body that would be looking for work um, or reason to exist. Um, I'm not specifically saying that the charter um, is is too broad. Uh, I actually haven't reviewed the charter with this point in mind, and I don't think this is something for the CRISP team to look at, but this is just one point that was raised on the community mailing list. No, sure. Very good point. Thank you. And I agree as well. I, I, I can certainly see the comments, and I, but I also agree that it's not necessarily in, our, um, in the scope of our work to comment on that. And uh, I presume that that now lies with the RIRs, and, and um, it is their task to uh, respond to this. Okay, if there are no other comments, I'll move on to 3D, the SLA text status. And there I'd actually like to ask, I can see that Michael is um, the only one from the, the legal council, um, the legal team that's uh, on the call. Would you mind if I put you on the spot, Michael, and ask if you uh, would be able to report anything on the status of the SLA text? Uh, not at all, Narani. Thank you. Um, just a quick update. Um, so as you all probably saw, there was quite a bit of comments on the, uh, the first draft of the SLA text. So during the ICANN meeting and actually ongoing, the legal team is uh, working together on a, an updated draft of the SLA, um, trying to take into account um, different comments and feedback from the community, as well as um, you know, trying to work with the RARs, uh, particularly the EC, um, and coming up with a, a more updated draft uh, that we hope to be able to release to the community in, uh, in the not too distant future. So. Um, that's really the update we did. Um, it was very productive while we were at the ICANN meeting, and uh, you know we thank everybody for all their comments and feedback and suggested edits. And uh, hopefully, we'll be getting something um, over with the EC soon, and then hopefully something to uh, to the community. Um, you know, like I said, in the not too distant future. But that's pretty much uh, where we stand on the SLA draft texts. Lovely. Thank you very much for that. Um, I have one comment to make, but I'll, I see that Andre is flagged, so I'll give the floor to Andre. Thank you, Narani. Uh, I have a question. I have a question about the process. So I understand this kind of preparatory phase where we are working on the <coughs> SLA pre-negotiation phase. We're trying to incorporate comments of the, from the community. But uh, does anyone have an idea what happens after that? Once uh, the NROEC enters into negotiation, um, what kind of uh, insight uh, into this process or insight of the resulting SLA from this negotiation process the community will have? Uh, uh, Narani, if it's okay, I answer to that one. Um, you know, Andre, I think that. Uh, Everybody involved wants to make it as, as transparent as possible and make sure that the community is at least um, notified in terms of any developments that are going on with negotiations. Uh, obviously, it may be difficult to have 
real time updates, you know, immediately because things may be going back and forth. But um, I know that at least from my observation, um, you know, for, at least from the RAR side that we're going to want to make sure that the community um, is aware of the negotiations that are going on and to the extent that there would be um, needed any feedback that would be requested, we would do so. But I think the main thing is, is that the Chris team proposal is what informs um, the RIRs and, uh, you know, the legal teams as to, you know, the overarching principles and that, um, you know, our intent is to be as uh, consistent and faithful, faithful to those as possible. And should there be any, um, you know, changes or anything like that, that the community would be, would be uh, updated as well. So I hope that answers the question. I know that, that um, as there's more detailed processing and timelines, we'll be also informing the community on that. Thanks, Michael. I'll make one comment and then I'll give the floor to to uh, Paul. And uh, and it's just a um, uh, just a point to this uh, group, I guess. Um, at the ICANN meeting, uh, at the board meeting between the ICANN board and the ASO, uh, I made a comment about uh, this discussion to the board where I in essence said that uh, we very much appreciated that the ICANN board had given their comments on the SLA through the public channel to us uh, and as we couldn't see any major stumbling blocks there, uh, we're very positive about the finalisation of the contract. And Izumi also made a comment uh, to this effect in the public session um, with the board on the first day of the meeting. And in essence, we, we, I think that um, we can very much take that position that since we invited the ICANN board to provide their comments uh, in public, uh, that process has been very transparent. And since they haven't flagged anything else major, we should be able to expect that they won't be flagging anything last minute uh, that is contrary to the public comments they've made. And um, so I really think uh, it was an attempt also to try to push for this transparency and to, um, to signal that we are not, uh, we do not want any last minute surprises. Um, and uh, the response to Sumi's uh, comments in the public session uh, from Steve Crocker, I don't have a, the transcript in front of me, but was in essence that they do not see any major stumbling blocks and, and uh, anything that is reasonable, they will accept. So, Paul, um, you have the microphone. Uh, thanks very much, Narani. Yeah, I actually just put up my hand because I wanted to just uh, support what, what Michael had said because that's obviously the, the, the line that has been discussed uh, in the RIRs. It has also been discussed in, in the NROEC. Um, the question is a very good one, Andre, that you asked. Um, but at some point, and I think anyone that, that you know, understands how negotiations happen between any kind of, uh, you know, uh, registered legal organizations, um, there is a negotiation process, and you could you couldn't really possibly think that the whole community would be a part of that that negotiation process 100% along the way. It just doesn't scale, does it? I think that there is the trust there, and trust is a very big word to throw around. And I think that Michael hit the nail on the head when he said that uh, we, you know, that the NROEC has agreed uh, to stick to the principles, and that's where the negotiations will take. Uh, will take place. Um, but of course, while they are going through these negotiations, there also has been talk that there needs to be some kind of feedback going to the community so that they're assured that the negotiations are going well. And I'm sure that the communications coming out of the RIRs will do just that. So I just wanted to support what Michael was saying there. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And I think that is also well understood um, by everyone um, that um, which is also why we wrote the proposal the way we did, uh, giving uh, enough um, leeway to the RAR to, to develop the, the actual contract text, but also to, to have those negotiations. So. Well, thank you, everyone. Are there any other comments on 3D, the SLA text data? 
And if not, I will go on to 3E, which is um, any other discussions in the global or regional community. And um, it's an open question. It's, I don't have anything to uh, report, and I just wanted to hear if there was anyone who had anything to report from um, discussions they had had uh, in the global community or, or in their regional community. Yes, I would like to report on the African region, Kibuba speaking. Thank you, Moenda. I can't hear you very well. Are you able to speak a little bit closer to, to the microphone? Yes. Thank you. I am saying we have some feedback from the African region. The, we had the African top level domain DMS forum, we, the African DMS forum in Nairobi that was held on 6th to 8th of July. It, and we had a session yesterday on the IANA transition where we presented the CRISP proposal, the review committee text, and also the service level agreement draft that was developed. Of importance was the view by the participants that we should make the output of our work easier to understand by having infographics like those that are used by ICANN. And the participants actually took, they were very appreciative of our work and how we have been able to engage the entire internet community, especially in our region, in the work of the CRIS proposal, developing the proposal and the documents have come out. We are very appreciative that we have involved the, we have involved the community and we have actually been able to get feedback from them and sensitize them on what IANA transition is and what is at stake to them. That is all. Thank you very much for that update, Moenba. That's very encouraging to hear. Um, as for the comments about the infographic, I actually think that fits quite nicely into um, the agenda item number five, communications and messaging. So. Uh, we'll, I will certainly try to address that in that point. Um, so thank you for that update. Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to update us on? Okay. Well, in that case, I will move on to agenda item number five, coordinating with other communities, the IPR. Um, so I gave you a quick update on what happened um, at the ICANN meeting and the response that the CWG had gave to uh, the ICG on the um, request concerning IANA trademark and IANA.org domain name. Um, I'm not sure if all of you have read it, but it's, uh, the link is pasted into uh, the chat room. Um, the, um, as part of the response to the ICG, the uh, chairs of the CWG um, uh, indicated that they wanted to have a uh, coordination call with the leaders of uh, the other two operational communities, something they reached out to us about. And uh, we had this call on Tuesday, the 7th of July. So I'll try to give you a quick update on, on uh, that discussion. This was a, an informal call, uh, but uh, there are notes to this call that they're currently putting together. So as soon as we have the latest, uh, the final notes of that call, I will circulate that on the CRISP team, but also on the IANA transfer team, the uh, transfer list. Uh, so at the call were uh, the two working group chairs, Mark Blanchett and Leslie Daigle of the ITF. Izumi and I, and also uh, Jonathan and Lisa from the CWG. Um, and we started out with uh, clarifying the status of the CWG um, position on the IPRs, where they essentially said that they, uh, the CWG does not hold a position uh, when it comes to the IPRs. Um, and they wanted to know what the discussions were in the other two communities. And um, both the IETF and, and um, we simply reported that we currently don't have any discussions on these issues um, 
we submitted our proposal and unless we get a request from the ICG, we, we are not opening up any new discussions. Uh, we also tried to ask them what their um, uh, plan was to close on the IPR issue um, and um, what, how, what they saw as a realistic timeline. Um, and um, in essence, they said, uh, the chairs explained that their goal is to change as little as possible. They are talking to their lawyers um, and as part of that discussion, they wanted to uh, report back on how the other two operational communities feel about this issue. Um, both uh, the ITF chairs and, and Izumi and I were very clear about that we cannot represent any views in the community that we haven't discussed. And really, in essence, if there was anything that needed to change in our proposal, then it's not something that we as chairs could do unilaterally. That would have to go through the uh, consensus-based bottom-up process uh, by which we developed our proposal. Um, there was, uh, they also drew the attention to the note from the ICANN board in response to the ICG um, and wanted to know what our sense of, uh, of those notes were. Um, where we, we didn't have much really to report again because we, haven't, we don't have any active discussions on the IPRs at the moment. But we offered our help to, um, with, if they needed any clarification on our position, um, that we would be happy to provide that to help in a conversation long in the CWG stewardship. Um, and uh, at the end of the meeting, um, the, they suggested to have uh, regular informal calls with us. Um, and uh, we have found that in, during, before the CWG submitted their proposal to the ICG, we have had several uh, very informal talks with the CWG chairs, and they've been very constructive in that they've helped clarify parts of the CWG proposal to us. Uh, we've also had the opportunity to clarify uh, the numbers community position uh, on, on various issues. But of course, any official formal uh, comments that we had, we submitted through this, the official channel. And I would uh, like to, to hear a little bit how the Chris team feels about this. But um, Izumi and I talked a little bit about uh, this possibility of, of continuing to have these informal talks. Um, but our position is very much that now that there are three fixed proposals on the table, uh, we are not sure if um, any informal talks between the chairs um, are motivated or helpful. Um, we're also a little, con little bit concerned that it would uh, go against our principles of transparency. Informal talks to clarify positions uh, can be very good. But at this point, um, we don't, I think all three communities are very well aware of each other's positions at this point. So I'm not sure if informal talks would lead to better clarity. And I certainly don't uh, think that we can have any other discussions with the other communities um, on issues that might affect us without going back to, to um, uh, the numbers community. We also feel that, um, that now that the ICG has taken on the role to coordinate this, uh, we don't want to duplicate any of those efforts. But I'd be very interested to hear any feedback that you have in this group. I can see a hand from Paul. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, you're raising a really great, great point. And, you know, like with anything, when you start to have larger groups like this coming together, it's probably, you know, quite difficult for us to try to say, well, everybody can be, in, be involved at any single time. I mean, I think that as far as I'm concerned, I can't speak for all the Chris folks, but as far as I'm concerned, like we have uh, you and, and uh, Izumi as the co-chairs here, 
and I have full confidence that whatever discussions you would have informally would be totally in line with what we agree here in, in CRISP. Uh, secondly, um, I can very much support this because actually I had quite a nice conversation in a car on the way to the ICANN meeting with Jonathan and actually brought this point up by saying, I think it's time if we start looking at the smaller things, the smaller details that are sitting there, because obviously with those three proposals, we can probably, we can probably all see that we don't see any, any big showstoppers or anything earth shattering. But they're all, there are always small little things that probably need to be communicated to keep things in line. And I, for one, think it's a brilliant thing if these informal discussions go forward. I think it shows that the communities can work nicely together. I think, as I said, it's probably difficult for all the communities and all the representatives to work together at any one given time. We have representatives. I think, uh, you know, we should fully support them. So if this is the way that you're proposing to go forward, I, I very much support this, and I, I think it's something that would be very positive and seen positively by others also that look at what we're doing within this process. Thank you, Paul. In, in fact, I'm, I'm somewhat um, uh, proposing that we do not continue <laughs> with informal discussions without being clear, I, I, being clear about the, what the, um, uh, the motivation of those um, uh, discussions are. Um, I have found our previous informal uh, discussions very, very helpful, both in building trust between the communities, but also in information sharing and clarifying each other's position. My concern now is that, that we, once we have three fixed proposals on the table, and the ICG has already started in identifying potential conflicts and sorting them out, that we shouldn't a duplicate that effort and and b um, not enter into anything that could be interpreted as more and just as than just information sharing. But I see that Andre's raised his hand, so please go ahead. I actually, I think I agree with your point, Noroni. Um, um, I think informal information exchange and building trust is very important, and here I agree with Paul as well. Um, I think it's important that we either have a very specific uh, thing to discuss at this point, which will not touch the proposals, because I think the proposals should be, uh, we should be very careful not to, as you said, duplicate this effort and discuss, establish new channels for discussing the proposal. As far as I can see now, the proposals do not have conflicts. And if conflicts are identified by the ICG, then we can enter into, you know, discussions and probably we need to enter into discussions with the community as well. Uh, but uh, before that time, I think even if you have informal conversation with the CWG chairs, that shouldn't be the proposals and the substance of the proposal should be out of scope of those discussions. Thank you, uh, Andre, for that input as well. Please, Paul, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry, don't get me wrong. I think if there's nothing for you to discuss, then yeah, certainly don't have any discussions. And you're right, we wouldn't want to duplicate any efforts. That wouldn't be at all what I would suggest. But I think the channels should remain open if they should be there. And certainly, if the need arises, I think it would be great to have that discussion within the Chris team and then, you know, obviously go off and have the, in the informal chat. But Andre raises a very good point. We don't want to be duplicating any efforts or, or doing anything in parallel, and that's, that's fine. I'm just saying that if the opportunity uh, sees itself having to arise again, or if it arises again, then and the opportunity is there, uh, use it as a, as a platform if need be. But yeah, you're right. I mean, if there's nothing there, then fine. That's fine. Thank you. In, in fact, it sounds like we're actually very much in agreement here that that informational talks to, to, to share information or clar clarify any positions or to build trust is a very positive thing, but that we should really respect the, the process um, and the role of the, the ICG, uh, A, but also that we, um, we should not, uh, we cannot negotiate or enter into any of those, um, uh, those discussions on behalf of our community without consultation. Um, is that a fair summary? Does anyone else want to add anything to that?
Okay. I can't see any more hands. I see Paul Rendick saying that's great. So thank you very much for that. Um, well, in that case, I will move on to agenda point number five, unless anyone has anything else to add. It doesn't look like it. All right. Well, I just posted something in the chat room, and you probably don't see because it's scrolled down. Uh, I think uh, I agree with Paul. Situational awareness is important. But again, uh, I wouldn't even go into clarifying positions because I think positions, we, I mean, we as Chris team, CWG, do not have positions. We are reflecting positions of respective communities. So the proposals reflect those positions, I don't think there is any need to clarify unless the ICG asks for this clarification. So, uh, here we are more on the formal side, but situational awareness, what's happening, this information exchange, I think that could be very useful. Very nicely put. Thank you, Andre. I agree with that, and I see that Paul also agrees with that. And and uh, and I, I think that we also all agree that Again, that um, I don't know how many times I've said this throughout the quiz process, but that transparency is our friend here. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, that was very useful to hear that uh, feedback. So thank you very much. Um, well, without further ado, I'll move on to um, agenda point number five, communications, messaging, RIRs and ICG. And um, it's more of a, um, it's a bit of a heads up and, and uh, it's uh, an information point for uh, all of you. There are a few things happening when it comes to communication. So um, clearly the, the main task of the RCG now is to consolidate the proposals and then seek public comment on that and then to finalize it. But one very important point that it's been uh, identified um, and that was identified at the um, that ICG meeting at Buenos Aires was really the communication effort and that it is uh, of, of essence for the ICG to put together a formal communication plan and, and to start communicating. I think we're all aware of uh, that it is not just a matter of putting together a reasonable proposal, but also to champion that proposal and to convince um, those who will have a say in the process that this is uh, the right way to go. It's also something that uh, Larry Strickling from the NTIA brought up at the ICANN meeting that this will be reviewed, uh, of course, by the NTIA, who will, who will prepare this for the U.S. Congress, but then it is really up to U.S. Congress to approve it. And um, the U.S. Congress will obviously read the proposal, the final uh, proposal, uh, but anything that can be done in terms of uh, com communications that can help this process along um, is it's incredibly important. And, and um, so uh, a few things are happening. The ICG has put, is starting to put together a formal communication plan. This is also, uh, all their, their work is uh, available from the Dropbox uh, link on the website. So all this is publicly available. And they have started to, they've put together a communication team with representatives from the ICG. They also asked uh, Izumi and I to be on that communications team. Um, we would also like to um, suggest that one RIR staff member is on that team uh, so that we all um, say the same thing. And that's very much the, the, the point also of the, the um, ITG communications plan that we all that everyone speaks with one voice and that there is one clear message coming out of the ICG. Um, in parallel with this, uh, Izumi and I have had uh, a few talks with the RIRs about this, the external uh, communications effort and that really we need to up our game, so to speak, when it comes to the external communication. Um, and we also met at the ICANN meeting uh, with the RIRs and talked a little bit about this. And um, 
the plan is to put together a communication plan for the numbers community. Uh, and in that, um, that involves um, making the, the CRISP website a little bit, uh, um, not just meatier, but also a little bit easier to, uh, to navigate and, and to find uh, all the correct information, not just about the proposal, but about the process of how, to, how this was developed, about the RIR structures, why um, the RIR structures are uh, as accountable as all of us feel that uh, they are. Um, and, um, and with the, all that, of course, uh, informational material, infographics, uh, useful charts, etc. So very much to, to the point that Mwenda was raising. Um, so those things, and I think from our perspective, now that we've, um, from a CRISP and numbers community perspective, now that we've submitted our proposal, um, I think we need to look forward and say, okay, so how do we communicate the message of our proposal in the best and the clearest way to the community at large, to, to the NTIA, uh, to ICG, of course, because the ICG will come to us uh, and ask us for information that they can then pass on. Um, I can, we'll be talking about our proposal, how do we make sure that we have as clear material as possible. There'll be others who will be looking at this material and talking to it. So we really want to make sure that this is as, as um, good and clear as possible. Um, so that was just a, a, a bit of an information update and, and Izumi and I will be engaged and we of course appreciate any help that we can get from the CRISP team in this. Um, also, I don't know if anyone from the RIR, and I'm thinking maybe in particular, Paul, um, if you have anything to add, as there were, there were discussions about you being involved in the RIR's uh, communications effort, um, please feel free to add anything if you have anything. Hi there, Narani. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, there is a team that's been assembled together from the RIRs. And as far as like senior staff go, um, I am uh, on that team as well. I'm actually also liaising from the team to the NROEC. I did bring this up in the NROEC uh, meeting that was held in Buenos Aires. They did talk about uh, communications and vamping that up and making sure that we were ahead of the game or at least definitely on it. Uh, in our communication. So I agreed to be a liaison from the group to, to the NROEC so that also decisions can be made, informed decisions by the NROEC in how we do the communications and making sure that the RIRs uh, are all working uh, together as, as we like to. So um, there is this team. We are working on a first set of items that have been brought forward there. I know Narani, they've, they've been in touch with you. I've seen the mails that are coming through. Uh, Izumi and yourself have given a lot of great input as to what kind of comms are needed uh, already. So a lot of this stuff is being worked on, for instance, website, the NRO website, and, and you know, these infographics, they're all being worked on. Or also taking a look at uh, a timeline, and we will be developing a timeline from now until probably about uh, well, to the end of the year is what we'd like to do, and fill it with slots of where we think communication needs to happen. So kind of foreseeing uh, areas where we would need to have some kind of voice and have the communications ready and let the RIRs work on that together because, you know, of course it takes time to move five organizations and, and, and get, this, get this done. So it's smart that we have a team like this, and it's great that you and, and Izumi have, have given us all your input. So thank you. Great, very much appreciated, Paul. Thank you for that. Did anyone else have any comments or any questions on, on that? Um, did, did any of you have holidays planned between now and the end of the year? Or uh, No, it, I'm joking. But um, did, did anyone have any questions about uh, what that entails or any comments or, or any, uh, anyone volunteering to, to uh, contribute to that effort? Please go ahead, Andre. I think communication is very important, especially at this stage. And I'm very glad that that what what Paul reported that that's that's a great effort. I mean, I, I, I'm always 
uh, willing to you know shoulder shoulder this effort. So if if any help needed from my side, please just approach me. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that. And Paul, please go ahead. Uh, just to let everyone know, I mean, we do work together when we work together uh, on on things like this. As RERs jointly, we usually do them through the NRO, and there is something called an NRO CCG, which is the Communications Coordination Group. For those of you that might not be familiar with this, and the people have been selected from 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 there, uh, basically, uh, to work on this. So all the information that we have uh, is going to go through the through through the CCG channels, which means that all the RIRs get a chance to comment on what's happening. I mean, there is a selected smaller group of people that are particularly targeted to work on this, but we obviously will be sharing this down the pipes of of all of our comms people throughout the RIRs. So, and thanks, Andre, for, for mentioning that uh, the support there. But yeah, so anyway, we'll be working quite diligently, I suppose. Great. Yeah, that's, um, I feel very positive about um, this. I can see that we still have a lot of work uh, ahead of us, um, but um, we've got some very competent staff on uh, within the RIRs to lean on. So I feel very positive about that. And I can also see the comment from Michael that he doesn't have nothing from my end. Paul captured it very well from the RAR side, so fabulous. Okay, before I move on to the final agenda item number six, did anyone else have anything else to add? If not, I will move on to the final uh, agenda item number six, follow up on the CRISP charter. I just wanted to make sure that we uh, close on this uh, item. Um, the NROEC suggested a, an updated CRISP charter. We had a few comments uh, and I suggested a, a slight amendment to it. Um, I have one comment to make that I'm not, uh, where I'd like to get your opinions on whether or not it belongs to the charter, but um, before I bring that up, did anyone else have anything that you wanted to raise in relation to the CRISP charter or the, the version of the CRISP charter that is um, on the mailing list now? I get the sense that everyone is, is fairly uh, happy and comfortable with it. So um, unless anyone raises their hand, I will assume that. Okay. Um, so, um, well, from our end, um, um, we should uh, make sure that we all have consensus on this and, and then uh, respond to the NROEC and then um, once the charter is completely finalized, make sure that that's published and, and uh, possibly even ask the community if they're happy with it. Uh, in many sense, um, in many ways, I feel that we get our mandate from the community as well. So if we make changes to the charter, we would like that to, to um, uh, we like the community behind that as well. I have one um, additional point and it comes back to the communications part. Um, it, it, I think we all agree that the work of the CRISP team is essentially done once the ICG has submitted its proposal to the NTIA. Uh, after that, um, the, the proposal is no longer a numbers proposal, and it's the ICG's uh, proposal with all three communities represented, and that is what will go to um, the NTIA. Um, However, there was one point that came up at the ICANN meeting that uh, Larry Strickling made uh, where he indicated uh, in a few places that uh, the NTIA, before submitting the proposal to, um, to the US Congress, they will certainly get back to us, uh, to the community, and have questions and pose questions about our elements of the proposal. Um, so, even though um, our role will be finished once the ICG has submitted its proposal, I don't see that there's anything for the CRISP team to do. I would, I would like there to be, I'd like it to be clear that we make ourselves available 
to answer any questions the NTIA um, might have. Um, so not necessarily the, um, I can't see that we would be driving any work or developing anything further, but simply make ourselves available to, to uh, clarify anything that, that they might see clarification on. Um, and I'd like to hear what uh, the group's thoughts on that are. Okay, so I can see the comment from Andre. I think this is reasonable and Paul, fine with me. Um, I, well, in that case, I propose that I can uh, suggest the text. Um, and uh, send it to uh, the Chris team and, um, and ask everyone on the, on the Chris team to, to agree or disagree uh, or to provide their comments. I see Jean Vier, you said, I think we met a consensus on the charter review. Uh, did you want to speak to that at all? Okay, well, in that case, I will send around my comments. Uh, I'll, I'll send, a, send around a proposed text, um, and I'm happy to hear any comments on that. Um, before we finalise it and, and send it back to the NROC. Did anyone else have anything else to say to that point? Your view is consistent with ours. Okay, well, thank you very much, Moendema. Okay, well, that moves us into um, item number seven, any other business. Um, did anyone else have anything else they wanted to raise during this call? We've got another five minutes to go, I can see. I don't see any hands. Paul, please go ahead. Yeah, Naranj, I just wanted to say, like, I think that we came together, those of us that were there, the Chris folks in Buenos Aires quite nicely. And I think we were led uh, greatly by uh, you and Izumi in all of the areas that you went out and represented the Chris team on, uh, be they informal or informal, that took place there. And it, it does take a lot of effort and it's, it's very much appreciated. But I did enjoy the buzz around what we had, those of us that, that were around from Chris uh, in Buenos Aires, and that's really great. So I'm happy to see that we are where we are as a team, and that's cool. Here, here. Well, thank you for that, Paul. And I, I, I um, plus one from me as well. Uh, I must say, I really appreciate the very constructive uh, um, atmosphere under which we we work, uh, both in these telephone conferences, but then also when we get together at these meetings. So that's that's fantastic to see. And I see that Michael agrees with that as well. So thanks a lot for that. Um, yes, and I see Jean Villiers is talking about the next meeting. As far as I can see from the regular team schedule, and Herman, so please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we are looking at the 22nd of July at um, the same regular time, 1300 UTC. Is that correct, Herman? It's correct. That's Love correct. It. That's correct. Okay, fantastic. Well, if not, no one has anything else to add, I'm happy to close with three minutes to two minutes, I see, to spare. So enjoy those two minutes and the rest of your day and week and speak to you all very soon. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.